All right, all right, here we go. This is gonna be a lesson. What I do every time is make sure we're in tune. How I do that is I play that open G. So if you play this and it doesn't sound pretty, something's up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find either a piano, a tuner, or just intrinsically know how to hear a boom, which is 440A. If you can't do that, that's okay. What we hear though, after a while of doing this is and those notes, you will kind of hear boom, 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 boom all over the place. So what we do is this string right here is our lowest string. It's called the D string. The string right above it is called the G string. Now this string right here, the third string, the G string is just like the fifth string. They're, they're both a G note, except for one is low and one is high. They're octaves. Same frequency, just one's moving a lot faster. This fourth string is a D, and then the one string is also a D. So what I do is I pick both the Gs together, pluck them, thumb and pointer, yeah, yo, and then D and D, thumb and pointer, nice. The only other string which is different from all these other here is this string, a B. Now something very important that I want you to understand is all chords are made out of notes. A note is a single frequency. When you add a frequency to another frequency, you get a harmony. And when you add a frequency to a frequency with a frequency, and those are three different, thank you, they are three different notes, it makes a triad. And all chords are triads. So for a chord to be a G, you need to have a one, three, five. Notice how I don't have a one, one, two, four. See? One, three, five. So when I have that one, three, five in the key of G, this is a G note, this is a B note, and this is a D note. Those open strings, G, B, and D string, your three, two, and one strings, just so happen to be a G, A, B, C, D. Get rid of my two and four. Look at that triad. G, B, D. G, B, D. G major. Exercise number one is called a spider exercise. You're going to take your first finger on both hands. Play the first fret, not on the metal, not on the nut, but in the middle. We never want to swim on the shore. We want to swim in the water. First finger is pointy. It is not a flat chord. There are flat chords and there are pointy chords. The pointy note starts on the first fret and does not play on the metal fretting. It actually plays on the fret itself. Pointy note right here, first finger. You can nail out one, two, three, four. Put your second finger down whilst keeping that first finger down. You're going to essentially be playing all four fingers on the fretboard using pointiness. If you cannot get these to come out in a... Do it till you can. You will find that scooting your finger a little bit back or forward or stretching tends to happen. When you're working super hard on this, do not look at the chord. Play in a mirror or play to a video. Do not lean over and blow the air out of your gut <laughs> and do not dig your elbow into your crotch or your stomach. You will notice by working real hard on your chords, you will be like, ah, and it just makes it so much harder. So what I do is a funky chicken, shake out that arm, take a deep breath, sit up straight and try the same thing and I guarantee it'll get a lot easier. Play five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night doing just this. We're gonna start at the three minute and 45 seconds. Make sure you're using your first finger on your left hand. Doesn't so much matter where you're playing there. Second fret, next string. This order. I'll do it with this last stretch. I'm gonna use my first finger on the last string, the high string, that D string, the one string. Ready? And I'm gonna count it. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two. Now I'm gonna go back to the beginning. The reason why I go from the very tip top and then back to the beginning, it helps me get from this note all the way here and have fretboard association, knowing seventh fret, first fret, seventh fret, first fret. You might not know that, but I know it's a big help. 
We have four fingers. Anything past these four is an extension. You generally don't play two extensions. You only play one. Then you change your finger pattern. We'll learn that for all three. When you play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve minor seconds, or half steps, they make an octave. Uh, 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 same note, just higher. So when we have that do, re, fa, so, mi, la, ti, do, I'm going from my open note to my second fret, my second fret to my fourth fret. Both of those are whole steps. Open to the first fret is a half step, just like our spidey exercises, right? So open to two is a whole step, two to four, whole step, four to five, half step. Five to seven, whole step. Seven to nine, whole step. Nine to 11, whole step. And then 11 to 12, half step. That makes up our major. La, 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 la. By going up the fretboard, we get to fill it in a linear fashion. However, to save time and our fingers and energy, we generally go up so far and then go to the next string. Which makes it easier to not traverse all the way up here. That's our spider exercises. Our chord of the week is a C major. We're gonna play with two different fingers. Our first finger is going to be going on the first fret on the second string, the B string. We're gonna put it directly on there. It's pointy, not a flat. Point, 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 not flat. Point, point, point. We're gonna put it down straight. Our second finger is gonna go all the way to the D string, the lowest string. It's going to be the fourth string because the superfluous string, the five string is the high G. Just memorize it. When we have those two down, I'm gonna take my third finger here and play a bookend. I call these bookends. I don't think anybody else does. Just makes sense to me. It goes on both sides. You're gonna hear me say this a whole heck of a lot. These are bookends. Why? Both these strings are the D strings. My D string. So when you're playing these two right here, you can actually do what I call teeter totters. You're gonna take your first finger off. You're gonna put your second finger, your middle finger that is currently on the second fret on the first fret on that note. You're gonna take the third finger, which is on the second fret up top here and play that note. And then guess what? You're gonna bring your pinky on and play the exact same chord that you just had with your other finger. The way we do this is you play the chord and then you kind of count and you switch it. The purpose of having these chords being played with two different fingerings is to take this chord, scoot it up and bar, which gives you a C sharp, D, D sharp, E, so on and so forth. Every single one of these chords are derived out of this concept. So when you're playing like a G major up here, as part of our G major, G major, G major, this G major up here is nothing more then a C major at the seventh fret. Watch it. There's our C major. C sharp, D, D, D. When we get up here, that same shape made in the second finger position makes our chord. We'll get into a lot of that, I digress. However, after learning this, what we'll be working on is our right hand and our left hand together. Don't need to know any of the names of the names, but what is great to know is what a half step is, what a whole step is, and then what you can do with those notes as having a whole step, half step in a certain order. They're called intervals. We'll talk about that more next week, playing our new chord of the week, G major next week. This week's chord, C major, practice the spider exercises and practice those teeter totters. Aloha.